This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In the previous video, I talked about the relational database concepts and how we came up with a data model and then a database for the animal shelter that we use in this tutorial series. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the primary key, which is also referred to as the unique identifier, so aka also known as. I want to mention again the foreign key and the role it plays to linking to a different table and a row in that table. I'll briefly mention or explain what a concatenated primary key is and talk about a surrogate key. We'll also learn a little bit about sequences and triggers in the Oracle environment and the identity data type. So this was the data model that we were looking at when we talked about relational database concepts in the previous video. We see these tables. Before we have these tables, and these, by the way, are tables actually in the database because we imported these definitions, uh, also called the data dictionary or the data model. We pulled those in from the actual database using SQL Developer. But before we get to that, we also looked at a description of the scenario for the animal shelter. And I said that when you're working on designing a database, you should just start making a list of nouns, words that come up such as employee, volunteer, client, name, address, breed, dog, date, phone number. You could have intake date, for example, when you take an animal in. You could have a placement date when you place an animal. And you could keep on listing these things because they are things that are going to go into the database. So one of the questions you have is which of these are entities? Because an entity becomes a table in the database. One of the things that gets easier to see with practice designing databases is identifying things that can be grouped together into a more abstract entity. We've already talked about the fact that we don't need a separate table for all three of these, each one of these. We have first name, last name, address, phone number. All of those describe a client, someone who brings an animal in or adopts an animal, the volunteer that works at the shelter, and the employee that works at the shelter. So we combine these into the what we see here, which is the person's entity, which becomes a table in the database. There's another one of those here in this list. We have name, address, breed, dog, cat. It's dog and cat. We can generalize or make this more abstract by referring to dogs and cats as animals. This would allow us to also consider birds, reptiles, and other things. So just because you've listed it doesn't mean it becomes its own table. This becomes animals. But what becomes a table versus what becomes a column in the table? One of the things simply is to ask yourself, what do I need to know about an employee? And you can start listing things. You've got first name, last name, address, contact information, phone number, so on and so forth. That means that that's probably a table. Whereas if I look at something like address and I say, what do I need to know about address? Well, I just need to know what it is. You know, is it 101 University Avenue? If all you need to know is what that value, what that data is, then it's probably used to describe something else in the list. The address is used to describe the people or persons in the list. Breed is an attribute that describes animals. So from this list, eventually you come up with your entities and then you start assigning the attributes to those entities. Entities become tables. Every table has to have 
a unique identifier, and that's your primary key, right? We've already talked about that, unique identifier, and it becomes a primary key in the database table, and there's a P out beside that we see up here in the diagram that we have of the database. In the past, you might run into an old database where you'll see two, three, four columns combined together and designated as the primary key. If you keep combining the columns, you'll get a combination that will be unique to each row in a table. But there's really no need to do that. The concatenated primary key is really a big headache when you're trying to build workable forms in an application. So it's much better to say, we don't have to worry about the fact that last name isn't unique, first name and last name isn't unique together. What we'll do is create a field, we'll create a surrogate key, and that will be used to uniquely identify each row. So we want a surrogate key, and we see that here, transaction ID, animal ID, person ID, student ID, we just create a field that gives us a place to put a unique number for each row in the table. So the surrogate key is the way to go. It's the simplest way to uniquely identify each row in a table, and it's certainly what Oracle Apex wants you to use when you're building a database and a web application that interacts with that database. How do we populate the values in a surrogate key? We're going to use in Oracle something called a sequence. This is going to give us, it's really kind of like a special little table that keeps track of the number used for a particular table. So with a sequence, we'll get a unique number for trans ID. When we put that number in, when we add a row, then the sequence will know to advance to the next number. We'll never get a duplicate number. So the sequence will automatically give that to us. And Programming code called a trigger is what's going to execute when we add a row. It will look at the sequence, get the number, and go over here and put it in the field. So we're going to use a combination of sequence and trigger. I will just briefly mention that in today's databases, in SQL Server and more recently in Oracle, you have the identity data type. That, that data type is basically saying this field, surrogate key, is going to generate its own number within the database and you don't have to have a separate sequence and trigger. So this is a data type, not data. We're not going to use the identity data type. We're going to use the field and we'll see the coding for the sequence and the trigger. So if I come over here and I'm logged into Apex and I'm in SQL Workshop in the Object Browser and I select a table, it's possible to have a column that's defined as an identity data type. Defining it that way means you don't have to add the sequence and the trigger, but we're going to do that. So when we come down here and look at sequences, we see that we have a sequence for the activity, for the animal, for the employee, for the persons. We will see that we also have triggers. I'll talk about these more in the next two or three videos. So hopefully this helps a little bit in showing how you can identify entities, attributes that describe entities, how to uniquely identify each row in a table simply by using a surrogate key and populating that field when you add a row with a sequence and a trigger. I just want to add that when I have something like purse ID here, actually I won't write that out, I'll just come back to my diagram and just remind you that when we have purse ID here in the persons table, we might have purse ID for Bill Johnson and Bill Johnson is an employee and he's working today and he processes a transaction where an animal has been placed. His purse ID comes from here over here so that we know who it was that processed that transaction. This is the foreign key. Purse ID is also for Sandra Wilson, who's the person adopting the animal. Her purse ID comes up here and is listed as the client ID. 
This is the foreign key. A foreign key in one table will link to a related table where that value is the primary key. In the next video, I'm going to talk about these lines between the tables and what this notation means. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00, zero through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video for a specific video, let's say I've at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex 02 DB, and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say 03, I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. Hopefully that'll help.